Welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. In this video, we're gonna be going over a tier list for five star characters. And I do wanna make it clear just right from the very beginning, this is not a regular tier list. So this is not a tier list that is who's the most powerful character, who's the most meta character, or even who's like my favorite characters. The point of this tier list is to look at all the five star characters and say, how good are they for a new account, for a beginning player or a returning player who's just recently started a new account. And the reason I wanted to do this was to have a resource out there for people who have a very new account they haven't played too much on maybe they're AR10, AR12, they've unlocked the free characters and not much more and there's a character that they like on the banner. Well the problem is that the new characters as they come out have tended to have harder and harder to get ascension materials and so you'll that character will just be stuck at level 20 uh, basically for a large portion of the game and I think if you get a new character you're going to want to use them especially a five star as you play through the content of the game. So you could just speed run through everything to unlock it all with like four star characters, the free characters. But at that point, the only thing that's really left is farming, daily commissions, etc., with the cool five star character that you unlocked. So we're gonna be looking at five star characters through that lens to ascend a character at level 20 to ascend from 20 to 40. Actually, we need to do this without Zhongli because he's gonna talk about Osmanthus wine. Okay, so to ascend from 20 to 20 out of 40, you need a gemstone sliver, you need a regional specialty, and you need mob drops. And this is generally pretty easy to get for most characters. However, some, like Kazura here, their regional specialty is not available until Inazuma. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. And then to ascend from 40 to 50, you need uh, all those same three things, plus you need an overall boss material. So Kazuha, as I mentioned, he his is dropped by the Magu Kenki, which is in Inazuma. So to get to Inazuma, you have to be AR30. Once you hit AR35 is the next ascension. So between the ascension from 20 to 40 and then from 40 to 50, those are the two ascensions we're gonna be looking at to categorize whether or not a five-star character is really usable as a main DPS for a new account. The other things we're gonna be taking into account are weapon and artifact availability. So um, some characters like and Kazuha have a weapon that you can get for free or almost guaranteed very early on in the game that will carry you through for a long time. Same with some artifacts, uh, we'll mention that. So that will bump a character up maybe if you can't, can't ascend them. We're also gonna be looking at utility for exploration and solving puzzles. So for example, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but a way to break rocks such as a claymore or something like Zhongli's shield or Klee bombs, for example, is really, really important. You also need pyro applicator. You need a bow character. It can also be very helpful to have a character that can launch you up into the air. There is a free one, that's the Geo Traveler. You can make a Geo Construct and then climb onto that. But there are several characters that are better at it, so we'll take that into account. We'll also be taking into account for characters that you can't ascend, if they're still good at the minimum ascension level to beat most of the content through Mondstadt, uh, Inazuma, and Liwa, they're still fun to have on your team at level 20 and still can fill a role even if they're not the main DPS. That's still going to give them some points basically. And then the final thing that I'm gonna look at is scalability. So for a character that you're gonna have to put resources in to make them your main DPS early into the game, if that character falls off and isn't really worth it later, they're gonna be rated slightly lower. Whereas if it's a character that you can just continue farming for, continue building all the way into the late game and they get stronger and stronger, that's going to be a boon to them in the tier list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the tier list and we'll go character by character. And first up, we have Yoimiya. Yoimiya, I think I'm gonna have to start off pretty low. Yoimiya is a character that can only ascend with Inazuma materials. She needs Naka Weed and Pyro Hypostasis materials. For the vast majority of the content of the game, until you get to Inazuma, she's gonna be stuck at level 20, and that already makes her pretty low. She's a decent DPS. She does scale well into the late game. You can give her all sorts of different weapons and artifacts and she'll be totally fine. She also applies Pyro and is a bow character. So for exploration, she's pretty decent. However, what I'll say about Yoimiya is that she's effectively just the five-star version of Amber for a new account because she's stuck at level 20 and you're not gonna be able to ascend her until you get far enough into the game that that point I don't consider it a new account anymore. So Yoimi is gonna start off in D tier here. She's definitely not F tier, she's usable. She's slightly better than Amber. And I think unless you really like Amber, you should leave your Amber at level 20 as you play through the game. She kind of does everything she needs to there anyway. But Yoimi, until you can ascend her, doesn't get a ranking higher than that. Next up is Kamisato Ayaka. She suffers from the same sort of restriction. You can't ascend her until you get to Inazuma. Also her mob drop is the handguard from like the Kairagi samurai guys. So you have to fight 
a bunch of them. She's a sword character and she does decent cryo damage, so she's okay, but she would really be mostly a DPS character, on-field DPS. And just so that we're clear, as we're going through these, these five-star characters, I'm really kind of assuming that they'll be used as the main DPS, right? So the, the idea of the account that I have in mind is an account where you started, you spent maybe uh, 50 bucks or something like that to buy some of the gem packs because there was a character that you really liked that was available on the banner. You got that character and you want to use that character to beat the game. So that's the idea. If you did that for Ayaka, she is low on the tier list because I think you'd have a, kind of a tough time using her. Her burst is like, okay, but she's going to be stuck at level 20 for a really long time. Now I will put her up in the D tier as well. She's not F tier by any means because of her dash. She can dash across water, which is super, super helpful. There are other characters that do that. Of course, uh, Mona is one and it's not something that you need to beat the game, but it does make things a little bit more convenient. So we're going to leave Ayaka in D tier here. Our right, next up is Raiden Shogun. Raiden Shogun, again, Inazuma character. You can't ascend her until you get to Inazuma. She also is a character that kind of needs a lot of help to be a main DPS. You need to really focus on the damage off of her ultimate. However, she does do a lot of good energy generation as sort of an off-field support, and she has a ton of electro application. So as far as electro characters go, if you need an electro character to solve a puzzle, Raiden Shogun does a really good job of it because she can just apply so much electro. For that reason, I'm going to put her up at a D tier, but again, she's going to be stuck at level 20 throughout most of the game if you get her on a brand new account. All right, next up is Klee. So Klee is a character from Mondstadt very early on in the game. She's going to start up pretty high. I'm going to start her in A tier. Klee needs the mushroom regional specialty to ascend, and she needs the scrolls from the Samachurls, the spellcasting guys, and then she uses the pyro red is fine. So she's eminently ascendable, I would say. Pretty easy to get her up to the max level at any point. She's a very good DPS in terms of doing a lot of damage. I will say that the options for Klee, as far as three and four star weapons go, are a little bit more limited. I think catalysts are the the worst for just straight up attack DPS characters. But if you pull something like the Wid Sith, she also works totally fine with a uh, sacrificial catalyst. I guess that's what it's called. Or it has some other name I can't remember. But anyway, the one that uh, the sacrificial version of the catalyst. Oh, fragment, sacrificial fragments. That's right. She works totally fine with that. Uh, and you can use her as a main DPS. And she applies an absolute uh, enormous amount of pyro, which is very good. She can break rocks. That's all very good. She scales pretty well. The only reason that I'm not going to put Klee into S tier is that her DPS primarily comes from her charge attack. She also needs to dodge a lot if you don't have a shield. So the problem with Klee is that she's very short, so she, she can't dash very far. Her playstyle is kind of hard to get used to, and her damage comes from her charge attacks, which means you're going to be running out of stamina a lot. If you've played the game for a really long time, you might not remember, but new accounts do not have very much stamina. You have to collect a ton of animoculi and geoculi to start getting up to that stamina level where you can seriously just do like charge attack jump cancels and maximize your TPS without just running out of stamina constantly. So because of that, I'm going to put her in A tier, but she's a high A tier. I think if you pull for Klee, you'll have a good time on your account. All right, next up is Chi Chi. So Chi Chi's the first of the standard banner characters. The reason that I included them on this tier list, even though you can't pull for them specifically right now, is that they actually have in the past run a limited time banner with Kaching on it. People who are playing around that time might remember. So there was a limited banner you could pull, and if you won the 50 50, you would get Kaching. So it's possible they would do that again. So I wanted to include the standard banner characters. If they come up on a limited banner, I don't think you should roll for them, but some people really, really like some of them. and. And I could totally see a new player wanting to, you know, they just wanted to get Jean or Deloop or Chi Chi or whatever because they just really like the character design. So I figured I'd put them in their own tier down here on the standard banner and we'll rate them within that banner as we come to them. Chi Chi is actually pretty good for playing through the game. She heals a lot. She applies cryo. Uh, she's very easy to build. You can put a sacrificial sword on her. Any three star sword that increases attack is fine. She's also a character that benefits from artifacts because just attack percent flat attack is very easy to get on artifacts. It's one of the higher percentage chances. Um, so you can just give her whatever gives her attack and then she's good to go like two piece gladiator three or four star artifacts as you come into them across the game level those up and she's going to heal a ton for your team she's just going to make playing through the game very comfy so i would say chi chi is uh, totally viable again if she shows up on a limited banner i would never recommend that a new player pull for her but if you happen to get her early she's definitely usable and if you really really like her she'll definitely pay dividends for you oh and i forgot to mention all the standard characters are, are super ascendable they're very easy to ascend they just take stuff from um, on set and Liwa, so you can get them right away up to the max level all right kokomi is next Next, Kogumi is also an Inazuma character, but she's not just Inazuma. Um, you have to get to Watatsumi Island, which is a bunch of more quests through Inazuma. As you play 
playing through those quests, she'll be stuck at level 20 that whole time, so you won't be able to use her as like your main character that whole time. You can have her on your party, of course, like I mentioned, but she's just going to be stuck. However, I'm going to put her up at C tier above these other Inazuma characters because I think she's actually pretty useful at level 20. She's basically Barbara, but better. She doesn't constantly apply Hydro to you the way that Barbara does, so you can actually put her Jellyfish down, get healed, and then run out of the Jellyfish, and you won't just get completely frozen constantly if you're fighting cryo enemies. The other thing is that she scales off of a ton of different stats. She scales off of attack if you have her on field, which you probably wouldn't if she's level 20, but she scales off of HP, healing bonus, and hydro damage. All of those are totally decent for her, which means that any combination of kind of copium artifacts will totally increase her healing, even at level 20. Plus, she is a very good holder of Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, which is probably the best three-star weapon by a long shot. It's the best catalyst. It buffs the rest of your team, gives her HP. It's all great. I think she's essentially a better Barbara, and I would never recommend people level up their Barbas as they're playing through the game anyway. Just keep her at level 20 and she'll do just fine for you. Pokemon is enough better than Barbara. I think she gets up to C tier. Next up is Ito. So Ito, I think, is a pretty easy F tier. So he is from Inazuma, of course. His ascension material is Onikabuto, which you can't get until you get to Inazuma. And then for the boss material, it's the Golden Wolf Lord drop, which you have to do a ton more like world quests, unlock that whole island to get down there to be able to fight the wolf. It takes forever. By the time you can ascend him from level 40 to level 50, you've beaten almost the entire game. And the problem with Ito is that he's a main DPS character. He really doesn't offer a ton of utility outside of being like tall and using a claymore. So he can run fast and he can break rock, but that's about it. Your main DPS as you're playing through the game really needs to be close to the level cap at all times or else you actually can run into some issues. Like you can struggle, especially with bosses, stuff like that. The actual story content usually is okay, but trying to fight overall bosses, the weekly bosses, trying to fight through domains. If your DPS isn't at level cap, you will have a tough time until you get way, way further into the game. So Ito's going to go in the F tier. If you roll on him on a new account, you're unfortunately just not really going to be able to use him for a long time. Next up is Shenha. So Shenha actually can level from 20 to 40 because she's a Liwa character technically. She takes Chinchin flowers and Whopper flower nectar, which means you could get Shenha up to level 40 and just have her at level 40. However, I think she's probably still pretty bad and I'm going to put her in the F tier. You're not going to be able to ascend her past 40 basically until you've beaten all of the content in the game because she uses the boss material from the Bethysmal fish apps, which are underground in Enkonomia. The number of story quests to get there is just like huge and long. You have to be over AR30. Uh, well, you have to be AR30 to unlock everything, but you'll be way over AR30 by the time you get there. So she's going to be stuck at level 40 and she really doesn't provide any utility at all. She's this niche support for a cryo character that still needs a lot of investment in order to provide that damage boost. She needs a lot of attack. You need a cryo at main DPS. I would say the only real way you could use Shenha effectively on a new account is if you were building like hard DPS like Kaya or maybe some other cryo character like Ganyu, for example. Full DPS Rosario would be totally fine. So Shenha could support like maybe those three characters. And if you had her at level 40 and you put a lot of attack on her, I think she would be fine in that case. But that's so niche. If all you're doing is rolling for one five star and then you want to use them as your main DPS, Shenha is just not it. So I'm going to put her in the F tier for now. She's going to go above Ito because she can't ascend up all the way up to level 40, but uh, that's it. All right, next up is Yaimiko. Yaimiko has the same problems as Ito, as in she cannot ascend at all. She's also a catalyst character. Technically, it means she could hold Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, which is fine, but Barbara's just going to be better for your team because she can heal, whereas Miko cannot. Miko can apply Electro, but she's not as good at it as Lisa. Lisa's the free character. So it's a little bit awkward to do puzzles because you can't really direct her elemental skill at all. You can always just do auto attacks and stuff, but I will just put her in the F tier. Uh, obviously, Yamiko is a fan favorite. Everybody loves her, but if you have a new account and you roll on her, just be aware you're not going to be able to use her for a long, long time. Next up is Kamisato Ayato. He's also F tier and he actually I think has even less utility than all of these other characters. So he's got the same problems. You can't level him until you get all the way to Inazuma and you've basically unlocked almost all of Inazuma. He's also a sword character. None of those things are super super helpful as far as utility goes. If you have Ayato on your team and he's just at level 20, he's just gonna really not do much for you throughout the whole game as you beat it. Now he does have high hydro application, which is the one thing he has going for him. The only free hydro character of course being Barbara and her hydro application is not very good unless you have her on field. So his off-field hydro application is kind of the only thing he has going for him. So not the end of the world, but weak enough, I'm going to stick him down at the bottom, very, very bottom of F tier. So next up is Yelan. So Yelan is a character that you can ascend right away. She takes Star Conches and the Fatui Insignias. So you can ascend her from 2020 to 20 out of 40. However, you can't ascend her the next one because she needs the drops from the Rune Serpent, which is underground in the chasm. You can't get there until you're AR 28 and you have to do a bunch of quests and stuff. So she'll be stuck at level 40 that whole 
normal time. However, 40 is better than 20, as we've said, and her elemental skill is really, really good for getting around just in general, which gives her a ton of utility. Plus, she's really not an on-field DPS. All of her DPS comes from her skill and then her ultimate, which all scales us off of HP. So she's really an off-field DPS, and I think as far as an off-field DPS goes, she's quite good and she can do quite well for you at level 40 until you've unlocked the ability to ascend her further. So because she would sort of be the secondary character on your team, she doesn't go all the way up into the S or A range. But I think if you have her at level 40, she will be very good for you. You can use the Slingshot 3-star bow, which is totally acceptable. Plus, she's easy to farm for as far as artifacts go early on. Any You just slap any artifacts that give her HP on and it's going to boost her damage. So for that reason, I'm going to throw Yelan into the B tier. She also scales really well. She, this is a character where even though you won't be able to ascend her right away, as you get into the late game, you'll be able to ascend her and she's going to get stronger and stronger. Next up is Aloy. So I was debating whether or not to include Aloy because she's never been on a banner before. She was a free gift to PlayStation users and then eventually came to PC and mobile users as well. However, it's possible she could be on a banner later. I think it's very unlikely, but just in case she is, I wanted to include her on the tier list at FFFFF tier. Unfortunately, Aloy is really bad. It's kind of a very poorly kept secret at this point. She doesn't really do much. Her cooldowns are really long. Her energy generation isn't great. Her DPS is okay as a cryo burst uh, sub DPS, but honestly, she's not that good. Now, a cryo bow user is okay as far as exploration goes. Bow users in general are pretty useful in exploration. You got to shoot a lot of stuff. I think for Aloy, the fact that you can't ascend her until you're halfway through Inazuma, meaning she'll just be stuck at level 20 the whole time, just is makes her an easy F tier. So there's not much more to say about that. Our right, next up is Venti. I think Venti is super, super high. Venti, you can ascend right away. He is a Mondstadt character, so he ascends from Mondstadt items, of course. You need to fight the animal hypostasis, which I think is one of the harder of the early game bosses, but still definitely doable. Venti is a character that you'll get great rewards from for investing in early. He's not an on-field DPS, he's an off-field DPS, so you want to pair him with somebody who would be on-field, uh, but there's a lot of options for that. His ultimate is insane for clearing out mobs just in general. It generates a ton of energy, it does a ton of crowd control throughout all of Mondstadt and Liyue as you're doing the beginning portion of the game. Venti will just destroy trash mobs. Plus, on top of all of that, his hold E skill lets you fly way up into the air. It makes getting the weird Jaculi and chests and stuff that are hidden up high super, super easy. It's way easier to use than Geo Traveler constructs, and it makes a lot of puzzles just trivial. Every puzzle in the game can be done with free characters. They're very careful about that, but Venti just lets you do them so much faster and easier. His passive is great. He's an animal character, so if you have two animal characters, you get the animal resonance, which is also great for exploration. Venti's just easy S tier, and you can put kind of whatever artifacts on him. It doesn't matter and he's going to be great. Next up is Ganyu. I may be a little bit biased, but I think Ganyu is also S tier. She's a Liwa character. She needs Qingxin and Whopper Flower Nectar to ascend. Easy to get. The Cryo Regisvine is her boss material, which I think the Regisvines are the easiest bosses to fight early on in the game. If you learn their patterns and you have somebody that can break their shields, they're super, super easy. Her DPS is crazy, even at low levels. There's a ton of good bows you can put on her. The four star bow out of the Star Glitter Shop is really good. If you can get that, the, I think like the Black Cliff War Bow. Also, their craft bows that are really really good for her. The thing that puts Ganyu over the top for me is that she scales insanely well. As you keep ascending, keep leveling up her normal attack talent, as you're just playing through the game, she's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Eventually she can just be a main DPS, like a top tier DPS, but throughout playing the whole game she does a ton of damage. I will also mention her elemental skill where she puts like the flower bloom out and it taunts enemies seems to work way better than any of the other taunt skills. In my experience using all of the different characters with taunts, like Amber's Baron Bunnies hardly ever taunt anything. The radius seems really really low, but Ganyu's E taunt seems pretty consistent that enemies will actually attack it instead of you, which is really nice. She can be an off-field DPS if you want. Her ult is pretty good. The one caveat for Ganyu is that if you don't like the aim charge shot play style, you will not like to play her. Just straight up, you will not have any fun. So if you play on mobile and you don't like to do charge shots with your bow, or if you, it's just not a play style that you enjoy, then Ganyu is like FFF tier for you. But if you do like that and you want to use a character that will just stick with you the whole game and be really good, Ganyu is S tier for sure. All right, next up is Jean. So Jean is on the standard banner. She's definitely better than Chi-Chi. Uh, sorry any Chi-Chi lovers out there, but Jean basically does what Chi-Chi does with better. She can heal a ton with her normal auto attacks as well as her burst. Her elemental skill, first of all, does a ton of damage. Second of all, it can crowd control enemies, and then it also does fall damage, which is percent max health damage in this game. So you can actually use it to kind of cheese enemies that are too strong for you. Uh, you can also drop enemies off of cliffs in certain places. It's super, super good. Her charge attack is also like really unique and really cool. It also launches them up in the air. So she just provides 
a ton of crowd control, ton of damage, ton of healing. You can build her anyway. She's super versatile, right? She can be an on-field main DPS, physical or animal damage, or you can just build straight attack. She'll do plenty of damage and do a lot of healing. She can be a, a burst DPS where you just bring her into E and ultimate, or she can even, you can just leave her at level 20 and not ascend her if you don't have the materials for it. And she can just be a healer with her ultimate. Her ultimate also cleanses any negative effects. It's insane. So Jean is, I think in most people's estimation, the best standard banner character, and I would have to agree. And if she ever came on a limited banner and you really liked her, I honestly don't think I could fault you for rolling for her. I will say, as I've said before, if you are planning to play this game for a while, rolling for a specific standard banner character is a waste of pretty much because if you're playing for a while, you will eventually get them when you roll on other banners. But if you're a new character and Jean was somehow on a limited banner at some point and you wanted her and you got her, she would do really well for you. The next up is Diluc. He's also a standard banner character. I think he's slightly better than Chi Chi, even though I did talk up Chi Chi a lot. She falls off. As soon as your Jean or your Bennett, which you're likely to get at some point, starts to heal better than your Chi Chi, she sort of is no longer good. Whereas Diluc does not fall off. He's also, he's a tall character, which is great for running around in the overworld. He's a Claymore character, which is great for overworld puzzles. He's a Pyro character. He can apply a ton of Pyro, which is also great for overworld puzzles. Diluc is really the old gold standard for DPS, like main DPS character. He trashes everything in the game. He's easy to build. There's tons of Claymores you can give him. You can put artifacts that give him attack and he'll be great. So I would put Diluc as a close second under Gene in the standard banner tier list here. Next up, Albedo. So Albedo, you can ascend right away. He just takes Cecilia's and Geo Hypostasis pieces. The thing about Albedo is that as an on-field DPS, he really doesn't do it for you. Now, that doesn't mean yet he's not good. He is good as an off-field DPS. He's actually quite good, but it means you need to have somebody else as your on-field DPS. However, the thing about Albedo is that his floor for how good he is for your team is really high. You can just switch him on, use his unlimited skill and switch him off, and that's it. That's all you have to do, and he increases your damage by a ton. He's easy to build because you can just put whatever defense artifacts you have lying around on him. You can also give him Harbinger of Dawn, which is one of the best weapons for him. His best in slot weapon is an event weapon that's not available anymore. You can kind of get Albedo ascended, give him some defense stats, and then he'll just sit on your team and increase your DPS and be great that whole time. So I'm going to put him in the A tier here below Klee for all those reasons that I mentioned. Next up is Zhongli. Zhongli is probably the best character in the game for this particular set of restrictions as far as how we're evaluating them. You can ascend him right away. He is incredibly versatile. He can be a shield support. He can be your primary DPS. Multiple three-star weapons that work super, super well with him. Him. Black Tassel is really good for shield. The White Tassel is really good for uh, just offense. He works with like all of the craftable pole arms early in the game as well. He just makes the game so comfy. You just get this massive shield and you can still work on your dodging and you can still dodge sometimes. But for the most part, he just makes it so that you can just play the game, not have to worry about getting hit. And he makes all your other characters stronger. And he scales super, super well. Plus, he's so easy to build artifact wise because anything with HP just makes him stronger. All right, next up is Kazuha. He requires Sea Ganoderma in order to ascend, which you can't get till you get to Inazuma. And then he requires a Maga Kenki pieces after that. So he'll he'll be stuck at level 20 for most of the time you have him. However, Kazuha is so good. He's very buildable. There's a lot of weapons that are good for him. At level 20, he would be an off, like a quick swap DPS. So you would swap him in, use his skill and his burst if it's up and then swap him out and that's it. But even at level 20, he's going to increase the damage of your other characters a ton. And his exploration utility is like unmatched. He's the best character for exploring because of his skill. You can just pop up into the air. You can climb infinitely with him because you just climb, drop E, and then get back on the rock. And so it takes no stamina. I think Kazuha is good even though he'd be stuck at level 20. He'd still be good on your account. And then later, once you're able to ascend him, he gets way, way, way better. I'm going to put him at the top of C tier, I think, just because he's only going to be level 20 the whole time. It's a little bit tough, but he's probably pretty close to B. All right, next up is Kaching. So Kaching is a standard banner character. I actually think she is weaker than all these other three for a new account. Her elemental skill where she gets to throw her stiletto up in the air and then uh, jump to it is really nice. And she has a decent amount of electro application for like puzzles and whatnot. But as far as beating the game with Kuching, she's going to give you a little bit of trouble. You have to learn uh, a lot of different combos for her to maximize her DPS. She can be kind of hard to build. So she just doesn't provide as much utility to your team as the other characters in the standard banner would. So if Kuching came on a limited banner, I would recommend against calling for her. Obviously, if you really like her, you can do that. Uh, I think Kuching is probably the weakest or among the weakest of the standard banner characters, I would not recommend pulling for her on a brand new account. Next up is Hu Tao. So Hu Tao, you can ascend right away. She does do a decent amount of pyro application. And if you pair her with the healer, she's okay. But I've actually used Hu Tao a lot playing through some of the later content of the game. And I found playing with Hu Tao as your main DPS, just for story content and exploration and stuff, kind of a pain. With a healer, it can be okay, but she does so much damage to herself that you're always low and she dies a lot. When her elemental skill is not up, her 
damage output is not particularly good. She's a polearm character, which means that she doesn't really provide any exploration utility in that sense. So even though you could always ascend her, I'm going to put her at C tier. She needs a lot of help, a lot of supports around her to make her better. You need somebody with a strong shield. You need somebody who can heal a lot and consistently. Like I had a fully built Chi Chi when I was using Hu Tao and it just wasn't enough healing because Chi Chi's ability is on like a 30 second cooldown. Same with Barbara. Her ability cooldown is super, super long. So it's just hard to keep Hu Tao's damage uptime in a place where it was like fun to play with. Most of the time I was just dying and having to use a lot of food and run back and forth to the statues of the goddess. For that reason, I'm going to put Hu Tao pretty low. Obviously, Hu Tao is one of the best scaling characters in the game. She's got a ton of potential to get really, really strong as the game goes on. But just because she's so hard to use, I'm going to put her in the C tier. Next up is Eula. So I did verify that you can get to the cryohypostasis uh, very early. At that point, you can start to ascend her. So she's an ascendable character. She takes dandelion seeds and heliotrol masks and then cryohypostasis pieces. She's a Claymore character. She's also the tall female model, which means that she runs fast. So she's got a lot of utility in that sense. And then as a main DPS, it's all physical damage. So physical damage is a little bit weird early in the game. So Eula is a character that sort of needs some help from your supports, but her floor is high enough that I think she'd still be totally fine and totally usable. The only thing I'd be worried about is like, there are a lot of enemies that like, she can't effectively DPS down. So for example, if you're fighting Ruin Hunters or any of the robots, really, they all have a huge amount of physical resistance. So that actually makes it kind of hard to beat and having just played through the beginning of the game a couple times on new accounts you fight a lot of those early on so i think eula is she's certainly better than like hu tao as far as characters that you can ascend all the time i think she's a little bit better because she is tall because she has a claymore and she can do a little bit of elemental damage right obviously with her her skill but i would put eula at top of b tier she will definitely perform for you if you get her she can get a lot stronger as the game goes on but she's a little bit harder to use than these other characters all right next up is xiao so xiao has a similar problem to hu tao but he is a lot less bad about it because if you just auto attack and use your E with him, you don't lose any HP and he's still good. Also, when you use his ult, you can jump really high, which is super useful for exploring. His HP loss is like set specifically to like during his ult, he, he just loses HP, which means that he actually is healable. So like if you have Shishi, you just use your skill and then you use Zhao ult and then you'll basically not lose HP for it. And then the next time it's up, it's the same story. Whereas Huta, you are spending HP every time you try to use your skill to do damage. So I think he's better than that. He is probably around He's actually probably better than Eula. He might go all the way up into A tier. I think if you commit to your Zhao, you'll be totally fine to beat the whole game. Yeah, that's definitely the case. And in fact, he's probably, as a main DPS, he's obviously much better than Albedo. But as far as like what he brings to your team, he's not. I'm going to put him up because I didn't really think about this too hard, but I think a main DPS is kind of like what's really important here. Albedo brings like a very flat power level to your team if you were to get him early, whereas Zhao, like it's a scaling power level. Like he gets stronger every time you ascend him. He's going to start doing like way, way, way more damage and he can be your on-field DPS. So I think we'll put him in the A tier. And then as far as ascending, him goes. He's a Leo character like all these other guys that we've been talking about. Ching Shin flowers, slime pieces, and Geovisha pieces. So very easy to ascend. All right. Next up is Child or Tartaglia. And he is also quite good. We're going to start him up pretty high. He's an on-field DPS character, which is kind of what we're looking at, right? He takes Star Conch and Fatui insignias to ascend and then Oceanid pieces. The Oceanid drops him down a little bit, but not enough that it's like going to change his tier. The Oceanid is actually probably the hardest boss to fight early, in my opinion. You really need characters characters, you really need crowd characters built, honestly, in order to fight it effectively. But you also need bow characters because if you get the spawn, which are the birds that only fly in the air from the Oceanid, you literally cannot fight them unless you have a bow character. Obviously, there are free bow characters like Amber, but if you have to build Amber just to fight the Oceanid, you're in a rough spot. So anyway, it's, it's not enough of a big deal that I'm going to drop him down a tier or anything, but it's something to consider for sure. So he's a main DPS. He's easy to ascend. He's also pretty easy to build and he does a lot of damage. He just does a ton of damage. So I think he's actually going to be at the top of A tier here above Klee. Even though Klee applies a lot of pyro, Child being a tall character who doesn't need stamina in order to DPS probably just pops him just up above Klee. He's just a little bit easier to use and like his ult does a ton of damage, his skill does a ton of damage. If you just get the rust on him, he's insane, but also there's a lot of other bows that are perfectly acceptable. I'm going to put him at the top of A tier. Next is Mona. So Mona is a standard character as well. I think she's better than Kuching, but not better than Chi Chi. Mona really can't be your main on-field DPS. It's weird because she has some like constellations that sort of seem like they want her to be on-field DPS where like she starts doing charge attacks randomly, but it's just not that much damage. She does have the same cool dash as Ayaka, but she doesn't freeze water. So you can cross shorter bodies of water. You can't swim infinitely the way that Ayaka can. 
Her E is not that helpful. It doesn't do very much damage. It's supposed to taunt enemies, but it like doesn't seem like it hardly ever does. Her ultimate is decent, but as far as Hydro application goes, it doesn't apply that much Hydro. It just does a lot of damage. And so in order to do Hydro application, you either need to use her skill, which is like okay and kind of slow, or she needs to be on field. And like I said, as an on field DPS, she's sort of lacking as far as like playing through the game goes. If your strongest character was Mona and you're trying to on field DPS with her all the time, it's not super good. The one thing I will say, it used to be that trying to use Mona or Ayaka as your on field DPS was miserable because their dash was so slow, but they changed that and it's actually not, not bad anymore at all. As far as Sand Banner characters go, I think she is slightly more useful than Kuching, but not as useful as Chi Chi, and you would have a better time with the other Sand Banner characters. Last but not least is Tainari. Now I thought his name was pronounced Tignari because I saw somebody who speaks Arabic talking about it, but then in the most recent trailer where he says his own name, he says Tainari. So I guess it's Tainari. He's a standard banner character, turns out. He's going to be on the next limited banner, but then he's moving into the standard banner. I didn't want to include him initially because he's a Sumeria character. We don't really know much about it, but because he's going to be a standard character, we can just stick him down here. He is a Dendro bow character. He seems like he'll be okay, but because he's from Sumeru, I'm going to put him down at the bottom. I imagine they'll make him easy to ascend because they're going to put him on the standard banner, but we don't know that for sure. It sort of remains to be seen. So this is my tier list for if you're a new player and you have a new account and one of these characters comes up on a limited time banner and you're considering spending money on it or spending all your primos on it to try and get them, this is my tier list. So this should help you sort of make that decision. Again, if there's a character that you really like, every character definitely can be used and you can have fun with every character in the game for sure. But what I wanna do is have a resource out there for people who see a character that looks really cool, but they think they'll be able to use it before they realize that they can't. Just so you know, there are like resources in order to tell if you're gonna be able to level up a character. So you can use a Tivat interactive map, which is a Hoyoverse tool that they have on their website. So let's say I wanna get Raiden Shogun, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to ascend her. So Raiden Shogun, she needs this fruit and she needs pieces from the Nobushi to ascend. So if you click on them, it'll show you where they are and you can see they're only available way down here on Seire Island, meaning you can't get them until you've done all these quests. The only thing you have to remember about that is you have to be at least AR30 to get the Inazuma. So it's super far into the story. Same with the Nobushi, they're all over Inazuma. And then the boss is the Thunder Manifestation, which is also down here. You also have to unlock the whole island. So Raiden Shogun is gonna be stuck at level 20 for most of your playtime if you're a new account until you've unlocked everything. That's what the tier list is meant to do is to show you if you like riding shogun and you want to use her you're gonna have to work really hard she's not gonna be very high level and she's gonna be hard to use whereas if you get jungly he's gonna make your playthrough like super fun super engaging super easy so that's my tier list if you enjoy the content feel free to leave a comment or if you disagree with me or think that somebody should be in a different tier let me know and other than that i'm signing out and stay tuned for more genshin impact content in the future